Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, and I just wanted to show you guys the Bethlehem star real quick. Now, we're looking at Stellarium on the first day of the first month in year one. That would have been the year that our Messiah was born, but not necessarily the day and the month, which is what we're looking for here. And we're looking for the Bethlehem star to show when his birth was. So what we're going to do real quickly is we're going to step through the year looking for what they would have seen in the East. Talking about the three wise men who would have been experts in star alignments and what the constellations mean as far as time is concerned. Well, we know they were looking toward the East in the year one. So let's see what they would have seen in order to get them excited about the Messiah. So like I said, we're looking here at the east and we're looking at about 5 a.m., which is just before sunrise. That's important because the sun's light is a buffer and you wouldn't have been able to see any of the star alignments while the sun was in the sky. So let's step through here. Let's put the lines here for our constellations. And let's go. So we're looking east and we're here in about February and we see there's nothing really in the sky of any excitement, even into March and even into May. Well, this is April. And here we're looking at May the 8th in the year 001 and there's no excitement in the sky. At least compared to what we'll see in a few months. So we're traveling and there's, we see there's nothing here, nothing special, except here we start to see Pleiades start to come into the picture in the constellation of Taurus. Now, we know that's important because just about everything lines up with Pleiades as the beginning of their cycles. So let's continue on and see what happens. Continuing on through August, looking in the east, we start to see Orion start to appear in the sky. In August, so on the morning of September the 5th in the year 001, you start to see Virgo appear above the horizon. But that would have happened every year about that time. But notice at the top of the picture above Virgo, we see Venus coming into the play here. This is getting around September the 22nd. We can see the moon appear around October the 1st. That's going to be the waning crescent moon, which would be 0% on October the 3rd, making the 30th day October the 4th, and the first day of the seventh month, October the 5th. But we still see in the sky there's not much excitement, except Venus is there. So let's keep going forward. Let's move up an hour closer to daybreak on the 6th. And then on the 12th, we start to see Mercury coming into play. So this is what the wise men would have been looking for is these star lines. And they would have started to get excited around the time when they start to see Mercury and Venus in the sky. Those align about every two years. Now they're starting to move below the horizon at this time of the morning. So let's shift up another hour, getting us right before sunrise. And we start to see Jupiter coming into the picture. So now we have Venus and Mars and Mercury 
all starting to come into the picture. So you have Venus, Mercury, and Mars all starting to align right after the Feast of Trumpets, which would have been a time when Mary and Joseph would have been in a booth or in a tent, which is where the Messiah was ultimately born. But as we continue to step through October the 26th, October the 27th, 28th, 29th, October the 30th, October the 31st, you start to see the moon coming into the picture. And remember, the moon is our sighting instrument. That's like the red dot on the scope. So that's when they especially would have been looking into the sky as the moon is waning crescent and getting ready for the 0% moon and the 30th day. So that's the alignment they would have seen on the first day of the eighth month, right after Tabernacles. They would have seen Venus, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, and the new moon. With Pleiades in the west. Pleiades would have been in Taurus descending in the west. All while they saw this star alignment in the east. And they would have looked at this star alignment for the next few days. November the 1st. November the 2nd, these cluster of stars would have gotten brighter and brighter, making an almost unbelievable sight in the sky in November of year one. Now, for some reason, Stellarium won't let me move this ahead. I can only go backwards minute by minute but you can imagine looking at this in reverse order this is what they would have saw on sunrise on november the 4th again this would be in reverse order so they would have seen all of this cluster of stars rising in the east on november the 4th and from a far distance it would have looked like one very big bright star like that even comparable to the light of the sun so there's your morning star and there's your bethlehem star looks like one star but it's not it's a lot of them all lined up together right during the time when we were expecting the birth of our Messiah. The information in this video was gathered using help from the Celestial Clock Calendar. You can get yours at coachingthefight.shop.